What's happening, guys? It's Shane here. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I have a really good one for you. I'm going to be interviewing somebody who actually didn't have a job at the time, and they basically tried to transition into digital marketing, and they were able to go from no job to $80,000 a year remote digital marketing job in a relatively short period of time. So I'm really excited about this one, and we're going to jump in right now after you gently tap that like button. David, thank you so much for uh, jumping on last moment to do this interview. I really appreciate it, man. Um, really excited to interview you. I think uh, this is going to be a really cool story, and I'm uh, excited to hear it. So thanks for coming on. And thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And yeah, my journey's definitely been an interesting one for sure. I'll elaborate more on that. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and uh, kind of just start at the beginning. Like you, uh, I, I I watched a little bit of Seth's interview, and basically you were working for a company, and you know at first it was okay, but then you, you kind of graduated. You could say like you were getting to the point where you probably didn't want to work for that company anymore, and uh, that's kind of like where you discovered digital marketing. So could you kind of take us back to the beginning and tell us about that story? Absolutely. Um, so. I was working for ADT Security Corporate specifically um, as a resale representative, right? So there's new sale and there's resale. New sales, the door dockers that come knock on your door, try to sell you security system. Um, I was in the resale department. Anyways, I worked for, for that position. It was 100% commission-based, which includes chargebacks. It means that if you signed a client and they canceled, then that money would come out of your next paycheck. In a certain amount of time, right? A bunch of stipulations, but it would still come out. So you'd have a feast or famine without all the benefits of being in real estate in those high margins, right? So it's just, I did that for six years. I found out a lot of things that I loved about um, having and making my own schedule, but a lot of things I didn't like about working for a corporate environment, like, you know, the structure, the manager gets all the bonuses, you know, anything, and the micromanaging, just to name a few. So after that, I did that for six years and I couldn't take it anymore. It was just completely soul sucking for me. It's not for me, right? It doesn't mean it's if, if somebody is in this position, right, that they could be absolutely crushing it. It's good for them, right? different for everybody. It's all about perception. For me, it didn't work. So I quit the job just cold, lived off a of savings, knew that I could like drive Uber and Lyft, at least have some form of income and like pay myself. Um, and then I started to like look around and wanted to have the ability to make money from a laptop. So I started doing what anybody does, right? You ask Google and you ask YouTube. So I did that, like how to make money online, right? So I got served with a lot of like Amazon FBA courses. Um, so I actually tried that. Um, got an LLC, started doing retail arbitrage just to start getting my feet wet in it. It's not sustainable because for me, I found out that I had needed to have about $10,000 up front to buy products in bulk in order to resell them on Amazon. If I did have that, right, I'm sure it would have worked out for me. So I also found Seth's course, right, by like Googling and YouTubing, like how to make money online. His stuff came up organically and it continued to come up. The YouTube algorithm does what it normally does. It's in the recommended. And I started watching all of his videos. It's like, okay, how much is this course? Right? Like, how much can I like afford to do it? Um, so I did his course and should I say this? Yeah, did his course, went through everything. And then probably uh, I finished it probably about six to eight months later, taking my own time. I wanted to make sure because when you're learning a new skill, you're not, you're, you know, you, you don't have another business you can run ads for, you know, if you're completely green, you know, some other, somebody else has to give you the money up front to say, okay, I'm going to test on this. Like I'm going to spend your money and hopefully I'm going to get you a return on investment with this. And it's kind of unnerving whenever you first start. So anyways, about six to eight months, um, I completed the course. And I started applying for jobs. My personal barrier to entry, and this is something that I've always just really, really disliked and hated, almost loathed, is the job application process, right? There's all mm -hmm. these automated things that when my, I never thought my, my resume was good enough, X, Y, Z. So I actually stopped that. I got so discouraged and down on myself. I was in a 
I was having a bad, bad time in my life. It was like an all time low for me. I would, mm. yeah, definitely an all time low for me. I mean, I had no financial stability. I mean, yeah, I had friends and family, right? That's a whole different thing. But for me, I couldn't take care of myself, couldn't feed myself, I couldn't like go out and do anything fun. And that happened for right about two years. It was really, really bad. Anyways, so I sat down with, down with myself and I got serious about like meditation and like law of attraction and manifesting things. And I already took Seth's course, so he knew everything that I needed to do, right? He gave mm -hmm. me the actual blueprint on exactly what I needed to do. Resume, what I need to put in the resume, like what you need to, to, to do and talk through a job interview, like all of this stuff. And I just didn't do it. Um, and I wasted about a year and a half, mm -hmm. like because of my own complications. Anyways, as soon as I got serious about it, Literally two to three months later, I had a job offer that was paying $60,000 salary out of the gate, like for a tech company. And I said, work for them. Like, it's absolutely amazing. Like, this is a complete game changer. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. It's, I, but we've all got our own demons we've got to go through. And like, whatever yeah. our perception of like, I can't do it, I can't do it. It's more of like, I won't do it. Like, so that was my thing. And like, I'm just, I'm so happy to be where I am right now. Yeah, I, I man, your story really resonates with me because uh, I've kind of been through a lot of the same stuff. Like I, I tried the Amazon FBA stuff out and it wasn't for me either. Um, for mm. me, it was more like, I just don't like sourcing products and talking to manufacturers and like communicating with manufacturers. Um, yeah, I can definitely resonate with so much of what you said there. And uh, I was just going to say, like, how is your quality of life in terms of uh, the job that you're doing now or, or even the job that you first got compared to the company? I think you said ADT that you were uh, working for before. I mean, <laughs> the easiest way to say it is night and day, literal night and day. Like I am I'm so for one, I work for a tech company, right? Like, yeah. The other companies are like not. Um, there's no ego complexes. There's a lot of people that are very, very, very brilliant, and very talented. Mm -hmm. um, we get a limited, a limited PTO. We do all the tech things, right? Like it's, yeah. The more, the, the most important thing is that the company appreciates you, and you're compensated for it, right? And everybody is remotely like around our age right you don't have somebody in their like 70s who's just a figurehead who's just like collecting dividends from wherever right like i mean call it whatever you want who's just making the decisions like that's not the case like the ceo and the cfo like we have you know regular calls with them you can slack them directly they're like hey what's going on like you know talk to me about this just wanted to say thank you right like and the recruiters, everybody is just so easy to talk to. Just very similar, like you and I are having this conversation, is how I have conversation with everybody in the company. And it's just, it's so nice. It's it's easy. It's productive. It, it's a thriving environment is the best way I can say it. And okay, so just to kind of clarify some of the things you were saying. Um, so you kind of went through by about a year and a half period where you weren't really like taking action on the course and weren't really following through. And then once you started taking action on the course, it took you approximately like two to three months or so to, to get a job. Was that mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and you went in immediately to a 60 K like a uh, base job. And then like, usually there's like bonus and stuff and especially in tech. Oh my gosh. They, <laughs> with all the additional comp you get in tech, like all the, the perks and stuff. Yeah. Tech is a great industry to work in for sure. And then can we kind of just maybe talk a little bit about the salary? Uh, what, what kind of salary would you, would you kind of uh, expect to make like typically um, kind of in your first digital marketing job. First digital marketing job, probably about sixty thousand dollars a year. Sixty. Okay. Either salary, yep, salary. Either salary, fifty-five to sixty, right? But salary or hourly. I mean, that's what you're expected to make. Gotcha. Um, certain companies will have different like bonuses for how they structure things. 
we have a different, you know, structure um, mm -hmm. for bonus incentives. Once that happens at a later time, got to kind of like scale up for that. Got it. And then would you say that's like kind of the same for tech versus non-tech? Like uh, tech is probably a little bit higher. If somebody is able to land a, a digital marketing job uh, in the tech industry specifically. I don't know, really. I, mean, I don't know. Can you expand on, what, uh, expand on what you mean by tech versus non-tech? Um, Just like, if like somebody working, else is not in this industry. Like if you're a digital marketing for like a software company, like if you're in digital yeah. marketing for a software company, for instance, would you think that mm -hmm. they would typically make a little bit more than maybe doing digital marketing for like a couch manufacturing company or something like that. So the best way I can classify what I think you're trying to ask is the difference between working for an agency and working for one company as an in-house marketer. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so if you're working for like the Mercedes Benz or the Hondas of the world, right? Like they have one marketing department that consists of a lot of different people that often run, run one Google ads account. Mm -hmm. They do different things. Um, and then for an agency, right? We, you know, handle a lot. Um, it, it really depends on your experience. It really, really does. If you get a job with an agency, one thing you have to know is that it's like drinking water through a fire hose. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of experience in a short amount of time. You get a, a chance to build your personal portfolio on accounts that you've worked with. I've worked with XYZ accounts, not going to say over here, right? But, um, you know, some big names that we all like know, love, and use. You walk around in the store, like, guess what? Like, I'm the guy that ran the Google Ads for that company or mm -hmm. currently runs the Google Ads for that company. Um, you know, so there's that. For an in-house, it is... It's, I would imagine it would be a little bit easier because you have probably one point of contact, which would be your superior and that company that you would just answer to. And that's that. The starting salary on average is anywhere between fifty-five and about sixty thousand dollars to Got start it. out. Um, from what I remember seeing. You kind of mentioned that you were interested in like making money online, kind of like you know, Amazon FBA, that sort of thing. So at some point in the future, you might be interested in kind of like starting your own thing, maybe as a freelancer or, you know, starting your own business, something along those lines. Do you think that your experience working in digital marketing is going to help you do that? Absolutely. I know without a shadow of a doubt that I could, heaven forbid, knock on wood, right? If I got fired, if I got laid off, or even if I decided to quit and go on my own, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I could. I could do those things on my own. It's always, I mean, when they like it or not, everybody wants to be on the front page of Google. Everybody wants to grow their business, right? Mm -hmm. um, and with my personal portfolio, like I was referencing earlier, right? Like I know exactly what to do. If you're spending X, Y, Z, if you only want to spend ten thousand dollars a month, um, five ten thousand dollars a month, then the account's gonna, the campaign structure is gonna be a little slim. If you want to spend, you know, one hundred twenty thousand dollars a month or more a million dollars a month, then you can have 50, 60 campaigns doing their own thing. Got it. Yeah, that is, uh, I think it is definitely one of the best skills you can learn, especially with your sales background too. You've got like so much experience. You've got the sales <laughs> side of things. You've got the marketing side of things. Definitely, if you decide to start your own business, you're going to absolutely crush it, I'm sure. Yeah. So let's kind of move on to personality wise. What kind of personalities do you think tend to do best in digital marketing? And actually, I, I probably should have asked, uh, said this. I think most people probably guess, but you went down the pay-per-click route, which is like Google ads, pay-per-click. Um, but most people probably don't even know what pay-per-click is. And then most people don't know that there's like six different major types of digital marketing you can specialize in. What kind of, like if somebody just goes into digital marketing in general, whether they're an introvert, extrovert, they're analytical, they're artistic, and any combination of those things um, on, the, on the spectrum as well. Um, do you think that there's uh, like a certain personality type that does well in digital marketing? Or is it just something where like just about any type of person that goes into it is going to find a, a good lane? Great question. Um, the best way I can say this is as far as like extrovert and introvert. So I personally identify as like an introvert with extrovert tendencies. Like I'm totally good just like sitting around and not doing anything. I'm totally good with like going to the beach or like traveling to different countries and like, you know, and then there's other jobs which are not client facing. You never have to meet with the client. So you don't have to dress like appropriately. You don't have to like, you know, have good communication skills. 
and you just literally just like do your work um, for, you know, creating campaigns, you know, just anything in the account, um, looking at analytics, looking at trends, trying to see like, okay, if I spend more, like looking at search trends and all these other little things. That's that would probably be the best way I can say it is that whether you're an extrovert, you're going to do very, very well. If you're an introvert, you're still going to do very well. And I did want to mention um, Seth does have a free masterclass where he basically answers just about every question you're going to have about digital marketing, you know, whether it's a good fit for you, the different types of digital marketing, personality traits, all that sort of thing. Really good masterclass. I took it myself and I learned quite a bit. Um, I'll put that down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. So definitely check that out. It's uh, highly recommended. That That's one of the reasons why like digital marketing, it's one of those careers where college is never going to be, in my opinion, college is never going to be able to teach people digital marketing. Even if you have like, nope. like some of the best professors and stuff, uh, it just, it changes so fast that the only way to truly learn digital marketing is to just do it, right? And the easiest way to do it is to get a job, get paid to do it. You know, that's, that's the best way to do it. Right. So it's like yeah. college is not ever going to be able to, to catch up by the time they catch up with like what's working right now, it's probably going to be like five, 10 years down the line and it's not working anymore. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. And, and, and the thing about it is Seth brings this up, the college teaches theory. College teaches a lot of really nice stuff, right? Beautiful things, right? It just really depends on some other things. And we just had a Slack message. I cannot, um, but as far as like marketing it you have to have experience that's what's that is what makes you highly respectable and like highly sought after in the field since i have you know got this got this career changed everything in my life like i still to this day have people that have somehow found out my work email and just you know try to scout me or recruit me or Trying to have something or my LinkedIn inbox is awful. So I went from a completely, you know, one type of mindset to an abundant mindset. <clears throat> and it's just, you know, even right now, like still have offers of like, sorry, not interested. I'm completely happy with where I'm at. Um, so what would you say to somebody who's kind of on the fence about investing in Seth's course? You know, they've they've probably seen all these interviews, they've seen like so many people have success. Like I could probably interview somebody every single day and just post like for 365 days straight of all the people that have had success with, you know, me and my business partners uh, helping people. But these videos don't usually do that well, unfortunately, on YouTube. Um, but what would you say to that that person who sees all these interviews, they see all the proof, but they're still on the fence about uh, investing in Seth's course? So direct answer to your question is like, do what you can, save up the money, buy the course if you can experience that for yourself invest in yourself more importantly but when it comes down to you actually finishing the course and like putting up for job interviews do not make the same mistake that i did and i waited do not do that like just keep doing it keep interviewing right refine your resume tailor it a little bit you know those things really do help got it awesome well hey man thank you so much for coming on this interview and, and sharing your knowledge and and sharing your story shane thanks so much man you're the best really appreciate your time and putting all this together